And we are live. Thanks for joining everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Jeremy, for those who are new to, uh, to this and are catching this on the fly. Uh, so I'm doing this series of interviews with people who, like me, were in the success stories for the Forks Over Knives magazine. And so I'm really excited today to have uh, our guest, Andrea Sarita. Andrea has a pretty incredible story. She, um, you know, much like myself, you know, suffered with childhood obesity, which led to some hyperthyroidism and, and, and type diabetes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, a whole bunch of stuff. And, and she went through that and came out on the other side, literally looking like a different person. So I'm super excited to bring Andrea in today and to talk to her. Thank you so much for having me, Jeremy. Thank you. So I don't even know where to be. You got such a wonderful and crazy story. I'm sure you get asked about it a lot, um, but also incredibly inspiring. I'm really lucky that I got I started losing my weight before like I had a doctor knocking at my door and going, hey, you got some stuff going on. But, you know, so so maybe just take us back to the beginning at the beginning. Like, tell us about how you got to the point where you decided you need to make a change. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the real, like I had known for some time that I needed to make a change. I mean, I can't remember a time in my life when I wasn't trying to manage my weight and lose weight. Like I, like as young as nine years old, I was trying to restrict what I was eating and then hiding in the closet and whatnot, what, because I was starving all the time. I was trying to exercise. Like I got into Richard Simmons sweating to the oldies at the age of 10 or 11, you know, there was, was like, that like one of your parents tapes that you found. I, it, you know, I don't know. I don't know how I had access to, uh, maybe I asked for it for Christmas. I don't remember. Oh, wow. But, I was, it was all, it was top of mind for me from a very young age. You know, I was, I was six years old the first time that a family member made a comment in public about my weight. And then it was from then on that I just, I always felt like I was taking up too much space, which led to this disordered eating in the sense that I would try and not eat in front of people, but then I would be hungry because I was growing and I didn't, I didn't know I didn't know what to do. And my parents also wanted me to lose weight, but they didn't really know what to do either. So um, I was just so saying, we I, had like, I would sneak to the store between school and home and like buy like cheese buns or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 I would like, I would sneak. Well, we would go, um, you know, I'm, I'm in my forties. So mom, I was one yeah. of those latchkey kids where, yep. You know, I would arrive, there was a, I had a key and I would let myself in and then I would make my sister and I a snack, which I now understand is the equivalent of, like was the caloric equivalent of a large meal. And then I would eat dinner again much later when my parents would get home, but we weren't eating dinner until seven or eight o'clock at night, some nights and I'm getting home and not. And so there was all kinds of stuff with the eating. So there's never been a time where I wasn't thinking about losing weight, but what the real tipping point was for me when I'm like, I've got to figure this out was I was invited on to a, a television, a local network television show here in Calgary, Alberta. They wanted to interview me about, I, can't, I was on twice and I'm trying to remember, I think the first one was about baby sign language. And so I was working as a sign language interpreter and they asked me to come on. And so I, the camera went live and like, I knew what size I was. I just bought myself a new outfit for the day. But when the camera went live and I saw the monitor in front of me it, and I saw myself on that monitor, it literally took my breath away. I was like, I did not know that that's what I looked like. And even though I had seen photos of myself, I was always like, oh, that was just a bad angle. And I sort of imagined myself at a much smaller size and I was really faced with that reality live on television and when I, I couldn't watch that for years and I did go back and watch it and I can see that moment where I like the wind was literally knocked out of me and so I finished the segment I have no idea how I finished the segment because it's all I could think of and I can see like I sat up and I fixed my top and I tried to sit up and it it wasn't going to melt away 160 pounds on no. live tv I'll tell you that but that's the thing we do. We 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 I did too. Is like we we know our angles. Like we angle yes, down so you don't see the chin, and you know certain you know vertical lines, certain kinds of clothing, and yes. what you just whatever it is to hide it and protect. Because I was the same way. Like I'd see behind the scenes photos of projects I was working on when I had to approve stills galleries, and I'm like, I don't like any of these. 
but it's yeah. just like I was never gonna like any of them. Yes, yes, exactly. And I was almost I was like, what's the matter with this camera? <laughs> like it sounds silly at the time, but I was, you know, but with video, live video, I was really just faced with this reality. And um, so I cried the whole way home. But by the time I got home, it was about a 20 minute drive. I'm like, I don't care how long it takes. I don't care what I what I need to do, but I, I'm going to figure this out. And I also said, you know, I decided a couple of things. And the first thing was, as long as I did not give up, then I was not failing. And I was not going to give myself any timeline or any type of expectation because I thought even at, you know, even if I lost 10 pounds, that was better than losing nothing. And even if I didn't lose a pound, but my cardiovascular was better or whatnot, then um, then I was winning. And so I kind of let go of all expectations, which is very different because previously it had always been, I'm going to lose 40 pounds by this date for this purpose. And I got, because I thought the time is going to pass anyways. So yeah. I'm just going to give myself the time and the grace that I need to figure this out. But the other thing I decided was I was not going to do anything I was not willing to do for the rest of my life. I had tried intermittent fasting. I had tried low carb. I had tried all of these different things and nothing was sustainable. Like I had gone to Weight Watchers, I don't know, five times, but it wasn't sustainable. Right. And so um, that was the other thing. So I decided I was not as long as I wasn't giving up, I wasn't failing regardless of what happened elsewhere. And I wasn't going to do anything I couldn't do for the rest of my life. Not long before this television appearance, I had gone in um, to see my family doctor. I had been put on metformin um, for type two diabetes, but I, well, I was not on it for diabetes. I was on it because I was having trouble with breastfeeding my son. And what they had found is, um, that for people who had insulin resistance, if you put them on metformin, that they might be able to produce more milk. So my, I had a breastfeeding specialist who was ahead, you know, or quite forward thinking in terms of different treatments. She's like, let's try this. So then I go to my doctor and say, okay, well, my son is done. I'd like to come off the metformin. And he's like, you can't come off the metformin. You're diabetic. And I was like, what, what, what do you mean? He's like, well, if we take you out, like your A1C is already elevated. If we take you off of this, you're definitely going to have type two diabetes. We need to protect your pancreas. You need to stay on it. So I'm 36 years old. I'm on metformin. And he said, you also have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And I was also struggling with mobility issues. There were some days where I struggled to walk because my joints were so, so sore. So these things happened in a very short period of time. And this is where I'm like, I am not going to be a 36 year old on diabetes medication. Forget it. So it was, it was sort of the culmination of those two events that led to me, like, just, I'm going to sort this out. I'm going to fit, I'm going to look back and see like, so I'm, I should also share with you that um, I had not long before this, like five years before I finished my master's degree in in uh, social work. So I was working as a counselor and I'm like, okay, on this car ride home, I'm uh, like, okay, okay. So I figured those two things out. Now, how am I, what am I going to do? And I'm like, you know what, why don't you use some of the change behave, the, the behavior change strategies that you use with your clients? Why don't yourself. you try them yourself? Right? So how about talking to yourself like you would a good friend instead of beating yourself up? You tell people to do that all the time. So it's me like, why did you eat that? What's the matter with you? You know, it's okay. Okay. You're having a hard day and you made a poor choice. What might you do differently next time? Yeah. Right? Try to really get away from black and white thinking. This food is healthy. This food is not healthy. Like, or, you know, like even like this is good food, bad food. I took the morality away from food whatsoever and started thinking about this is a healthier choice. This is a more filling choice. Um, you know, I tried to get rid of that all or nothing thinking when it came to movement. And I and I started my husband had been at me for some time because I went I went vegetarian back in about 2000 because I was feeling very unwell. And that was when I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. And in a way, uh, in, as a way to manage my symptoms, like my GI symptoms and my fatigue, I decided to try going vegetarian because I read that the healthiest diet would be a vegan diet. But I'm like, that is too extreme. I can't do mm. that. But when you are 30 in your 30s and you are faced with <laughs> things like diabetes and liver disease, you know, it's like maybe extreme is exactly what we need. And my husband had been saying to me, like, why, why don't we cut out 
dairy. And I'm like, because we were already vegetarian. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's just bananas. I'm a Dutch person. I am half built out of dairy food, actually. It's, you know, I didn't think I could do it. He's like, let's just watch Forks Over Knives. Let's just see. And at the end of it, I'm like, I can't unsee and unlearn what I have learned. And so we started slowly. Like we, we said, okay, we're not going to just throw everything in the garbage, but we are not going to um, buy it. We're not going to replenish it. So once the sour cream is out, the sour cream is out and that's it. So it wasn't a cold Turkey thing. Um, we kind of did it. And then as we ran out of things, we just replaced them with non-dairy alternatives. Now, when I first went plant, well, when I first went vegan, I gained 35 pounds because all of a sudden I'm like, well, those cupcakes are vegan, so they're healthy. And that is vegan. So I'll try that. Oh, and let, you know, and I was eating all of these vegan foods, lots of mock meats, lots of processed food. And so I gained 35 pounds and I'm like, okay, I'm doing this wrong because I thought <laughs> mistakenly that, well, I'm like, vegans are thin. So, you know, my mom is like, well, don't get too thin. Don't look like one of those gray skinned emaciated vegans. So I thought like weight loss was promised as long as I didn't eat, but that's not how it worked because a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. So I went back and I rewatched the documentary and I'm like, Oh, Oh, okay. So low fat also and (laughs) minimally processed also. So again, my husband, David was incredibly supportive and he was like, all right, let's read. And at first I'm like, we're cutting out all the oils. And he's like, no, that's too extreme. So I started cooking my food on the side. I'm like, that's fine. You cook food for you and the kids and I will cook mine separately. No, and we have the same thing. I would just prepare it slightly differently. And then he saw what was going on and he's like, oh, he got kind of curious. He's like, hmm, okay, well maybe I'll try that. And then he lost about 70 pounds as well. So Good between the two of us, we have lost like more than either of us weigh right now, which is just insane right um and we've kept it off now for a number of years um well well, good for the two of you doing it together because i think that's a lot of people's problems too when they don't have the support of a uh, of a partner or a spouse or or anyone it can be really easy to like just let one bad meal become a second bad meal become a third Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely and it, it made all the difference because although i had to chuckle a little bit so one of the other things that i did when i was trying to figure out where i went wrong with this whole gaining gaining weight as a vegan thing um i started for a while to track what i was eating using a free app my fitness pal just so that i could learn a little bit better about the caloric value of food which i never learned in weight watchers even though i was counting points and doing all the things i it didn't click for me and it didn't register for me and i read this one book called the diet fix by dr yoni friedhoff and i and it it just made everything make sense to me. So putting that knowledge with the whole food plant-based diet, the weight just started slowly but steadily coming off. And I never felt deprived. I didn't feel hungry because I let myself have a treat every once in a while because I figured as long as I as long as I log it and as long as I know I am making an intentional choice, then it's fine. And so that's what I did. Yeah. And did, can I ask you, did you find yourself Cause I went through that, I went through the whole calorie counting thing too. And what I really liked about it at the beginning was that it was like, I saw it as like, oh, this is currency and I only have so much money in my bank. Yes. And if I run out, I can't spend, I just, and I, and I made that a rule. I'm like, you can, and I, and I decided on how many calories a day I was allowed. Yep. And I was like, that's my budget for the day. And I, and I literally don't have it if I can't spend it. So, but my problem was, and what I'm curious about you yeah. is when, once I kind of got to, you know, a, a, a healthy, sustainable weight, I went way too far. And I ended up like gaining like an extra or losing an extra 30 or 40 pounds from probably where I am now to the point where people were like, you're that emaciated. Like People thought I had cancer. Like they thought I had gotten really, really sick. And of course, you know what it's like when, when I, I went from the point of same as you, where I was just, you get addicted to losing it. And you're like, and now I went from like, I went from a, a double or triple X clothing size to a small, And for Mm -hmm. me, I'm just like, what a triumph. So the idea of like gaining weight back seems so counterintuitive to me. So it was hard for me to stop 
calorie counting because I became yeah. so addicted to it. Yeah. And I, I don't know that I, you know, I don't know that I became addicted to it so much as like, I just, I actually felt it, found it quite freeing because oh, at the good. end of the day, if I had it left in my budget, so to speak, right? Because I also love that analogy and I would use it with my clients and with myself. Um, but the way that I looked at it was maybe like slightly different um, in that there are, you know, I looked at it as the calorie counting was all about checking the price tags of food. And this is what mm -hmm. I got from the diet wow. picks. And so it's like, I'm checking the price tag. Do I have enough in my budget to spend this? Now, there are some days where if we were talking about money, there might be a big splurge and it would totally be worth it. And then there are other days where it's not worth it. And depending on what we're, what our goals are, we may choose to make that splurge or not. So I never looked at it as this is my ceiling. So let's say, you know, my, my goal was 1500 calories or whatever, right? That um, it, I never looked at that as a ceiling, but I would say, is, is this particular, is this food worth it? Is, you know, is it a special occasion? And I would give myself permission to sometimes go over because yeah. there are some days where that splurge is totally, totally worth it. And so I would have that thing, but it wasn't every day. Because if it was every day, I wouldn't meet my goals. And like you were saying, I like the way you approached it because you also said earlier that you had that mentality of like, I'm not going to do anything I can't sustain for life. Mm -hmm. And that's true how it is. Like you can't be that disciplined your entire life because that's how you end up breaking completely. Yes, yes. But I, I did have a similar experience, you know, with losing too much weight. And my doctor was like, okay, you need to stop because so I'm five, I'm a, about five, nine, five, 10. And I feel really, really good at around 145. You know, I'm not super big boned, despite the fact I was told my entire life I was big boned. I'm not actually big boned. So I feel really good around there, but I got into the one thirties and people were like, you okay, you know? Um, and so it, again, it, it's a, it's a mind bender to try and be like, okay, I've been loose. It took me two years and three months to lose about 160 pounds. And yeah, I was uh, the same, the same, yeah. same time frame. Yeah. And so I, after that, like you said, you kind of get into this mentality of that, that feeling of like, okay, I've, I've lost more. I feel really good. And then if, and then when I had like, okay, I got to stop, how do I maintain? How, what do I do? And I, there was, there's so many groups out there to support you with losing weight. But when I got to this place where, okay, now I need to maintain, I felt like there was no support out there for people who need to maintain. And it's a real mind bender to figure out, okay, so is it okay to gain a few pounds? And then I would get really anxious. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I, that was really, really hard. I found that almost harder than the losing weight. Cause once I figured out how to lose weight, I'm like, I got this. I know what to do, but I did not know how to maintain. And so I would dip down too far. And then, and I, I felt like I could never relax because I was either afraid of losing too much or afraid of gaining too much. And you, the, it's a fallacy that you can just maintain one number. It does fluctuate over time. It does go up a bit, down a bit. That's normal. But as somebody who has post-traumatic dieting disorder, I was freaking right out. Anytime I would lose too much or gain too much. And what a weird thing to be like, I have to stop gaining weight. I've never had this problem in my whole life, you know? So what I did is I stopped walking and walking was more for my mental health than anything else. So that was hard too, because that's what I was using to help with stress management, which helps with controlling how much one eats. Yeah. So uh, we got a question here that I think ties into yeah. this from uh, Grandma Gigi. She's Asking, what did you eat a day and how much? So especially in terms of like, once you started to find that balance and that maintenance, what did you find? Like, what kind of things helped you just so you didn't have to think about it? Are you, do you still track or you're not tracking anymore? I'm not tracking right now. Um, and so, and I, I can chat about that a little bit. I will probably be going back to tracking for a little bit, um, but I'll, I'll answer uh, Grandma Gigi's question first. So one, one of my favorite. I don't have any rules because strict rules uh, lead to rebellion. And I've gone down that road. Yep. There, so no, no rules. But what I try to do is eat 
fruit and vegetables with every meal and snack. Even if I decide today I'm going to have a bowl of non like plant based or like non dairy ice cream or something like that as a treat, there's always a bunch of berries on the side because it makes me feel full. It makes me feel uh, content. And then it kind of crowds out space for some of the more high caloric foods. So I really aim for foods that are high in uh, nutrition and low in caloric density. So I love that caloric density chart. It is like my go-to and I really try and have as, me as much veggies as possible. So even with say pasta, people are like, you eat pasta? Oh, I love pasta. Same. But what I will do, yes, pasta. But what I will do, one of my favorite things to do is I'll put pasta and then I will put a handful of fresh spinach and then put the sauce on top and it wilts the spinach just enough. And it is, um, I mean, spinach is a little tricky with these braces right now, but I chop it up and, um, and I love that. Or I'll add in peppers and mushrooms and zucchini and I just try and bulk up everything. So what do I eat in a typical day? A really good day for me would look like oatmeal for breakfast with lots of fruit in it. Like you can't eat too much fruit. You can't. That's what I would say to everybody. Too many fruit and vegetables. You can't. Your I body will just stop you because you'll be That's right. Yeah, exactly. It's self-limiting. You can't eat too many. And I like love potatoes so much. So, so much on a weekend. We'll make a nice big breakfast. I'll do a tofu scramble with lots of veggies, um, potatoes. I might even have a piece of toast on the side, a, a cup of fruit on the side. Um, I love my coffee, so I love. I will definitely have one or two almond milk or oat milk lattes in the day, um, and that that for me, like when I've chatted with people before, I said for me it was the Java math that really made sense when I was going to, when I was complaining, contemplating rather, um, going plant based, and someone said to me, well, you know, for one, or someone didn't say this to me, I figured this out for one day, like skim milk latte, I could have three almond milk lattes one skim milk latte, three almond milk lattes, same calories sold. That yeah. was the first thing. And that was the, that was like one of the bigger things for me to figure out was how can I have my coffee? Cause I love my coffee yeah. for lunch. I usually have, um, leftovers from whatever we had the night before my husband and I both really love cooking. And so we try and I, we don't do meal prep, but if we're going to make say roasted veggies, at the beginning of the week, we may quadruple what we think we're going to eat in that meal. And then those roasted veggies go on, they go, and I also make a big pot of grains. So that way it quick lunch for me, because I work from home is some say brown rice with a bunch of roasted veggies and a drizzle of garlic tahini sauce. Delicious. So lots of leftovers, sometimes soup, sometimes, a, but I, like when I say a salad, right? My, my friends laugh at me because they know a salad for this is like a little side salad. I don't know. I don't know who this fills up. I use right? a mixing bowl. I, have a mix I, <laughs> I use like a mixing bowl, like a big stainless steel mixing bowl, whole head of romaine or a whole like half of a package of spinach and peppers and tomatoes and onions, maybe some chickpeas. If we've got some open, throw it all in, put a little drizzle of homemade dressing and good to go. Like, but, and I will eat that entire thing. I have said before, I eat more fruits and vegetables than a silverback gorilla in a day. I'm pretty sure. Like, I just, I can't eat enough. And then for dinner, we'll have, and we love, we love Mexican food. We love East Indian food. And we make it all at home. We make it all from scratch, you know? Like, we used to buy a lot of sauces and things like that. And we just don't anymore. Veggie burgers, I love, like, we'll make, now those we will buy. I really like the Soul Cuisine veggie burgers, 60 calories, mushroom burger. We love that. And I put on all the toppings. Um, and then we'll do roasted, dry roasted potatoes. Like we just roast them on parchment with a little bit of seasoning. They're already wet. The spices stick. We don't need oil. If we really feel like we need it, we'll just do a quick little spritz. That was another book I really loved was Reversing Diabetes by Dr. Neil Bernard. Mm -hmm. And he really talks about, um, about using cooking sprays and things like that uh, instead of oils. So we do that. We, yeah, that's kind of what, what I'll eat in a day. And then I almost always have a, a nighttime snack. Nice. And I'll add on to your pasta thing before you yes. mention what your snacks are. If your water's boiling, cut up some broccoli. Yes. Throw it in while the pasta is still cooking for the last two minutes and it, and it cooks perfectly and other vegetables can go in there too. Right. Great. It's tip. the fastest thing and it's already done. That's a great tip. Yeah, yeah, I love that idea. And we've started taking like silken tofu 
and mm -hmm. blending it with tomato sauce to make a rosé sauce. Nice. So it, it adds your 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 some nice fat and some nice protein into it too, and and it's quick. You just do it in a little hand blender. Or, yes, uh, yes, yes. So we fast. one of the things that I did is I took a, a plant based cheese and milk making workshop. I've never made plant based milk, mostly because I don't know how to count it <laughs> for my tracker. But we did. But we make a sunflower seed cheese, so to speak. It's like almost like an Alfredo sauce. But um, it's, you can also use cashews, but we can't send them to school. So for the kids, we like to use the sunflower seeds. It's also less expensive and it, it, it cooks up beautifully. We use it as Alfredo sauce. You can thin it and put it on top of a lasagna or a pizza and it will actually broil and brown in the, um, in the oven. And if you make it a little bit thicker, then we've added before fresh rosemary and dried cranberries. And it's almost like, well, I call it Vorzon cheese, vegan Vorzon cheese. It is so good. Do you have a link for that that I can throw down in the description later on? I will. Yeah, I will get one for Send you. Send it to me and I'll throw it in there. So That's someone okay. else, uh, Kimberly, is asking that you mentioned you stopped walking. Did you replace <laughs> that with another routine? Oh, yes. And I still love walking. I still really love it. But I was walking every morning. So this is one of the things I did when I would plateau, like I got to 208 pounds and I got stuck for three months. And I was like, I did not come this far to come to only come this far. I had already lost oh, about 100 pounds, but I was not done yet. And I, I had to figure something out. So I had started doing Zumba. I started when I was about 250 so pounds um, and I started only once a week. And I loved it so much. It was so much fun. It was like no exercise I had ever done before. And I was very lucky that I found this amazing studio with these amazing women. And I had so much fun. I wanted to start doing it twice a week. That happened at the same time that I hit this plateau. And I tried doing it twice a week and my knees are like, no, thank you. We don't like this at all. So I started like, okay, what do I do? Because I have osteoarthritis in my knees. So I, I looked up and I said, the best thing you can do for osteoarthritis is walking in the knees. So I started walking in the mornings before my kids woke up because it was free. I had limited resources. It was free and I could do it before anyone was up. So I would get up at 630 in the morning in order to make this happen. I had to untie my running shoes and leave them at the front door. It sounds silly, but if, if there was a single barrier, it wasn't <laughs> going to happen. I had to find the sports bra and the clothing and lay them out in my bathroom before I went to bed. Again, if I had to scrounge around for a sports bra, I was not going to go for this walk. Mm -hmm. I'm very lucky that I live in a beautiful area and was able to have this lovely route. I'd only go for half an hour because going back to my original routine, my original guideline, I'm not going to do anything I can't do for the rest of my life. And I'm not going to go to the gym for two hours a day, five days a week for the rest of my life. I went down that road before, but I could see myself walking every day for a half an hour, even when I was 92. So that's what I did. And it took two and a half weeks before anything happened and the scale budged. And I was like, I was stubborn. I was dogged. I'm like, I am not going to give up. Something is going to have to give. And if you look at my progress, you can tell after two weeks of when it started because my weight just went Droop, and that was it. The rest of it came off. So I stopped. So I had all, so I had increased my Zumba because I had lost the extra weight. My knees were happy. So now I'm going to Zumba three times a week. And, and you're I'm, enjoying it. And I'm loving it. And I'm going to a hit class once a week. And I was still doing my walking because for me, it was almost like a moving meditation. Put yeah. on music, go down to the river. I would stand and have a moment of gratitude. Just like, you know, just thank you for the day. Thank you for whatever, and things I was grateful for, things I was hoping for, just a moment, right? It wasn't anything profoundly spiritual. It was just, and I would look at the pelicans and I would look at whatever and and look at the trees and then go back and I was ready to start my day. So when the doctor was like, you got to stop walking, that was hard and I really missed it, but I wanted to continue to do the other things that I was loving so much. And so I kept those things and actually became a fitness instructor. So that's a really great way to ensure that you always show up at class, you know? So what a, what a crazy thing that you went from somebody who had days where you weren't sure you could walk because mm -hmm. of your physical ailments from your weight and, and health and whatnot to now like instructing Zumba and inspiring others. 
it really was i'll tell you i got i had um somebody had heard we have a magazine here in in canada called uh impact magazine yeah, I'm, I'm in canada as well but the oh, you're in canada. I'm, in, okay. I'm in toronto yeah oh, okay perfect i love that i've talked to a few people but they're all american so that's super exciting um hello fellow canadians um so impact magazine they had heard about my story and they uh, they named me an athlete with impact and i was able to do this fitness photo shoot and i can uh, see i'll probably get emotional doing it uh talking about it now but i can remember driving home and i was all made up i had professional hair and makeup done and i uh I was driving home and I had a board meeting later and I thought, oh my goodness, what are the preschool moms going to say? Like, oh, look at how fancy you are for the board meeting. But I had my hair and makeup done. I looked great. And I thought, well, I'll just tell them I had a fitness photo shoot today. And I thought, I had a, a fitness photo shoot. Like, I there were some days I couldn't walk. There was some days where I didn't know how I was going to do it. And I just did a fitness photo shoot for a national magazine. And my story was only published in Alberta, but it was a super proud moment for I me that I got to do that. Yeah. Well, you should be oh. proud. It's such an incredible thing, you know, and I know that is just like, and that's why I started, you know, my little website and started doing these videos and because I found I, I, I people go and asking me, and I was just like, well, clearly this information needs to go out there because people are curious. Mm -hmm. um, on that note, I wanted, I thought we could both tag team this. Um, so Grandma Gigi made another comment. She said mm -hmm. she started Whole Food Plant Placed with no oil, no salt. And she's been doing that since April of last year and she lost 40 pounds. So congratulations on that. Fantastic. But now the scale has stopped moving and she eats mm -hmm. one pound of greens plus vegetables and baked potatoes. And um, she also said that she goes to physical therapy and walks once a week. So mm. I think, I mean, I'll, let me just jump in and I'll, I'll let you take over. But I would just say from my point of view is that depending on where you're at, like fitness will meet you wherever you're at. And mm -hmm. so if, if, you know, if you can increase that once a week, walk to twice a week or just walk yeah. a little bit longer or find yeah. a path where maybe you're walking up a hill or just any way to just slightly increase. And there's also just so many great like workout videos that you can do just on YouTube. Yes. That are yeah. really low impact. And for people of all different, different abilities, I know even the people I use go all the way from like intensity to beginners and they'll even give you tips that they say, Hey, if you can't do this, try this mm -hmm. and, and just find, but also like Andrew was saying, find things that are enjoyable for you to do. If you like, especially any kind of physical activity where it's like, if you can walk with other people or just whatever it is, just as long as you're moving, you're beating everyone else who's sitting on the couch. A hundred percent. Absolutely. So yeah, Grandma Gigi, what I would say, I would echo everything that Jeremy has said, you know, um, is the fact that you've lost 40 pounds already is fantastic. What I found, I, I found, hit a couple of plateaus and I just found I needed to shake things up a little bit, you know, whether that was, um, you know, adding a little bit more exercise. Here's the exercise mantra that I live by. And again, it comes from the diet fixes. Some is good, more is better, everything counts. So, you know, what you're doing now is great. It is great. Everything counts though. So even when, um, even if I don't have time to get in my exercise, I will park, even if it's a couple of stalls further away from the entrance of the store, I'll do that. And I love also thinking it's not all or nothing, it's all or something. So, you know, sometimes I say, well, take the stairs. Okay, but if my appointment is on the fourth floor, I don't know if I can make it up four flights of stairs. Okay, but what if you took the elevator to the third floor and you just walked one flight of stairs. What if you took the elevator up, but you were able to take the elevator down or, but you were able to take the stairs down. And if you can't do the whole four flights down right now, that's the other thing. It was my favorite word is yet. If you can't do it yet, start where you can do a little bit more every day. I didn't start by doing 30 minutes a day of walking. I started by walking to the mailbox and back and then walking around, that was five minutes. Then I did, bumped it up to 10 minutes. Then I did, you know, a, a little bit more until I'm like, okay, 30 minutes, but I don't want to go beyond 30 minutes. Sometimes on the weekend, I would do a 45 minute walk, take the scenic route back. But that was the exception, not the rule. And I, and when it comes to, um, you know, adding, like Jeremy said, other things that you enjoy, if you like music and you like dancing, one thing that you could explore is a uh, is Zumba Gold. So Zumba Gold classes are typically only half an hour to 45 minutes at the most. 
they are low impact and I teach Zumba Gold as well. So I, and so it's one of my favorite formats. People think it's only for older folks. That is untrue. It's for, it's for people who are new to exercise or even new to dancing, because what's different about that is that we wear a microphone and we'll say two steps to the left, two steps to the right, shake your booty, whatever it is. Whereas in Zumba, we don't use a microphone at all. And we just, we're like, go this way and da -da 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 -da, woo, and that's it. So it's a little bit easier to follow if you're new to dancing um, and it's low impact. There's no quick turns, there's no twisting and there's lots online. You can, if you were to go and Google or go on YouTube and look up Zumba Gold, you know, just do one song and see how you feel. And yeah. then maybe next time you'll do two. And yeah. Kimberly S here also suggested <laughs> uh silver sneakers on youtube yes silver sneakers is another great option um you know that uh it's specifically designed for older adults and um and but anything that is designed for older adults is also awesome for people who uh, are carrying extra weight for people who have are rehabbing from injuries when i started off i started like i love aqua size also i love being in the water it was me and a bunch of grandmas. I didn't care. I was I was overweight. My joints hurt. And it was the only way that I could get moving. But making it fun really takes the work out of workout. And then it just becomes something that you look forward to. And I would also, the other thing I would say about the fitness piece is, let's say that you go and try a silver sneakers class. And you're like, that wasn't for me. Well, maybe try a different one because all instructors are very different. They give off different energy, different vibe, and you may not jive with one and you may love another. So don't give up. You've come so far. 40 pounds is amazing. It's huge. It's huge. It's like if you haven't done it yet, this is super fun. I used to do this all the time. Go to the grocery store and try and pick out a, pick up a 40 pound bag of something. Like yeah. you might have to go to the kitty litter section or the dog food section, you know, but I used to go and pick up a bag of like 10, 20 pound potatoes, go pick up two bags of 20 pound potatoes. That's what you've lost. That's incredible. So, I was thinking about like, um, well, cause I same as you, I lost like 160, I lost 180 at one point wow. and, and I picked up and both my kids at the time together weighed 180 pounds when they were little yes. around that time, yes. I picked them both up and, and tried to walk up the stairs with them. And I couldn't do it. I, I, I made it barely, but I went and I was like, how did I do this all the time? And then sometimes I'd carry them too. But I loved your, like the way you're phrasing it, this idea of like, it's like sneaking vegetables into your food, like yeah. sneak movement into your day, just like that extra st flight of steps, park a little further away, yes. where, whatever it is. And, and you know, what I learned is that there are people who are natural movers. Like I think of my Aunt Pat. My Aunt Pat was 100 pounds soaking wet, but the woman never sat still. She was constantly up. She was moving. She was puttering. She was doing things. And I kind of thought that that's who I was until I got a pedometer and realized that I'm basically a sloth. And if I do not intentionally exercise, then I don't really move that much. So for me, I needed to be very intentional, schedule my exercise in, make a plan, untie my sneakers, find the sports bra, or it wasn't going to happen. Whereas there are other people who just naturally park further away, take the stairs. They may not need as much intentional exercise as someone like me. Yeah. So, yeah. We got, I find I often, like I'm a filmmaker. And so a lot of times I'm just working from home. I'm in development or post and I'm just working from home. I found the best thing I we did is we got a dog. Yeah, they're great health coaches. They're great because they just they look at you and it's like, dude, it's noon. That's right. We need to walk. Like the the yeah. look he gives me if we haven't walked yet in the middle of the day is serious attitude. Yes, but yes, because it's, it's it's guilt on a different level because it's like, oh, that 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 other living creature is relying on me. That's right. That's right. Exactly. And it and it kind of takes it 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 no. How do I say it? It's less about, okay, it's a chore. I have to do this for my health. It's like, okay, well, the dog needs to go out. Right. Uh, so yeah, that, that is very, very true. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So what, what would you say was the hardest part of your transition? If there was one. Yeah, no, uh, there was, uh, you know what I was, I think that what I had the hardest time with was, people's reaction to my weight loss and 
and some of the comments that I got I and the way that I was treated differently and not in the way that I might have expected. And I found that really hard. I didn't know how to respond to some I, of the I, things. I, I heard this saying. phrase recently that no one cares about your health until you start being healthy. It's, yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Nobody ever talked to me about how much extra weight I was carrying. Nobody ever talked to me when they saw me struggling. Sometimes they would make a nasty remark, but it was usually like sort of, under their breath or something like it, but it was few and far between. And then it was like open season. When I started losing weight, people felt like they had open season to comment on what I was doing. I can remember people that I didn't even know that well, like, oh my gosh, stop. So what, are you want to be a bikini model now or something? Like your leggings are baggy. I'm like, they're jogging pants. And who are you anyways to say anything? Like, this is none of your business, right? Like I'm, I, my doctor knows what's going on. I'm doing this in a very healthful way. And so I don't know why anybody cared so much. People would say, oh my gosh, you're so skinny. You're going to disappear. And I think that they meant it. Like, I think that they were trying to be complimentary, but it didn't feel that way to me. I think it just made people feel guilty about that they're not trying harder and Maybe. so, and just and seeing people as yourself or myself, it's just a reflection of that. And it just, it's, it, it shames them in a weird that has no, in a way that has nothing to do with us. It's all about their right. own shit, you know? Right, totally. Well, and it, but at first I didn't know how to respond. No, I had the, same, I had the exact same thing. I would sort of like bark back at them. And then I'm like, okay, I had that conversation, just like what you said, Jeremy, like, okay, it's more about how they're feeling about themselves, nothing to do with me. Like, and so I got better at it as time went on. So, but I found that it was unexpected. Like I just, so there was that. And then the other thing was just dealing with the anxiety of gaining weight. So um, in 2020, so when COVID shut down, like when COVID shut the world down, I was like, hey, what am I going to do? Because non-essential appointments at the doctor's office where I was working as a health coach, they were all shut down. So I, and I was, all the facilities I was teaching at, that didn't, that, those no longer work. So I really, really quickly figured out how to set up a studio in my house. And I started teaching cl fitness classes because I was so anxious about gaining the weight back. And so I, uh, I'd already gained some weight because I started doing some body weight, like hit classes and I was gaining muscle. So That's my good weight, yeah, the good weight, it's really, really hard to convince somebody who has struggled with the scale for so long that it was good weight. Yeah. So I, that was kind of, oh, but I'm okay, but your clothes still fit, your clothes still fit. And then in 2020, in 2020, I tore my meniscus teaching. I was teaching 10 classes a week at home. And I tore my meniscus in my right knee. Uh, I'd already torn it years before, but I didn't get any treatment for it because I thought they were just going to tell me I needed to lose weight. And they probably would have. So it accelerated osteoarthritis in my right knee. Then I tore my meniscus again and went to physio. And eventually they're like, there's nothing we can do for you. Like your knee is, you have a knock knee. And now, and I was getting so much pain in the, on the outside of my knee, the lateral side. So they said, the only thing that we can do for you is we can give you an offloading brace. We can give you injections or we can break your leg, completely reconstruct your leg. And then you can get back to doing what you love to do. And I said, well, how long will that take to rehab? They said two years. And they said, but unfortunately you have the knees of a like 70, 80 year old woman and you're only in your early forties. We can't do a knee replacement yet. So I came home and I told my husband, I'm like, well, I'm not doing that. I can't take a year off of exercising. I'm going to gain all of the weight back. He's like, you have to do this. Like, he didn't say that. He said he was very good. He didn't say anything. I'm like, I want you to tell me what you think. And he's like, I think that the answer is an easy one. You need to go. So in the summer of 2021, I was admitted into hospital. They surgically broke my femur. Normally they would do this in the tibia below the knee, but because my femur on my right side was shorter than my left, the doc is like, you are young, you are fit, you are healthy, let's do this. And it is the, one of the hardest leg surgeries to recover from. So in 2021, they broke my leg, they, re they reset my, the angle of my leg, they put a plate in with nine screws. I should have brought the screws so I could show you. They're this long. I got them as in my trophy. They went right through and through. She made a necklace out of them. It was why I asked. I'm like, could I please just see them? And he gave them to me. He cleaned them for me and gave them to me as my little trophy. 
So they did that in 2021 and I crawled my way back. I was doing five hours of physio a day, every day at home because I didn't have any benefits. I was self-employed and I, we couldn't afford with four kids for me to go to physio every day. So I went a couple times a week at first, then once a week, and I would work my butt off at home. And my physio's like, I've never met anybody who works harder than you. She's like, my concern with you is you're going to overdo it. Mm. And so then I was back. I got back to teaching finally. And I started in a chair. Grandma Gigi, I started in a chair. That's what I did to come back. I would put, I would do a Zumba Gold class and I would, I I would just sit and I would do the arms and a little bit of legs. And then I would do one song on my feet and the rest in a chair and then a little more on my feet and then the rest in a chair until I could do the whole thing in on my feet. And then I got back to Zumba modified. And then a year, was it a year ago now? Oh, 20, yes. A year ago, a year ago, next Friday, I had an appendicitis. And I couldn't even do physio, not even my bike for six weeks because they also found a hernia. Ooh. So they fixed the hernia, they fixed the appendicitis, could do nothing for six weeks. And then in June of last year, they went in and they took out the hardware. And oh, since from that time of having my first knee surgery, I had three surgeries in nine months, I have put back on 20 pounds and I do not like it one bit. I, I just don't, you know what, it's fine. People don't even really notice too, too much, but I notice and I feel the difference. I feel it in my clothes. Same. Feel it. I have a couple of shirts that don't fit after Christmas yep. and I've slowly been coming back down after that, that holiday wait. Yes. So that's why I said earlier, and I said I would kind of touch on it later, that I probably will go back to tracking, um, even just for the short term, just to kind of recalibrate my eyeballs, you yeah. know, because... I'm just kind of guessing and guessing never really got me very far before. So I'll probably go back to that. And I'm waiting, desperately hoping I'm looking out the window at all the snow and ice. I just want the snow to go away because then I'm going to go back to walking yeah. because I'm only teaching twice a week right now. Um, I teach one strength training class, a bar class and one Zumba class a week. And then sometimes I'll teach a class online um, on the weekends, but otherwise uh, I'm not really, and I ride my, my stationary bike. That's all that I can really do uh, with my knee and stuff. So yeah, I, I, I will get back down to my happy place. So what I call my best weight, which again, this all comes from like this, this book, the diet fix. I really, really loved it. And I would have never picked it up based on the title, but that with a whole food plant-based diet really was a game changer for me. Um, so, yeah, I uh, I was going to say something and I'm, it was probably going to be very profound and I it's gone. I'll it'll, come back. It'll come back. So I wanted to ask you, uh, and, and, and you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to, um, but because you lost so much, I had the same amount. Did you have skin removal surgery? I did not. Oh, wow. I did not, but I did it slow and I drank yeah. a lot of water. I mean, I have, I mean, I have some, right? Yeah. I'll have some, but you know, ladies, there's very little that a pair of high-waisted compression leggings will not hide. I just tuck it in and I dress for it. I've worn I've worn two-piece bathing suits. I never thought I would be able to wear a two-piece bathing suit, but I like get a vintage style, which has got a high, it's a little bit higher. And um, but I've not had any skin removal surgery. Wow. So I, I did go for it because I because mm -hmm. I well I lost almost 200 pounds at one point. Yes. It was it was to the point where I was like I was getting rashes and in, mm -hmm. in that way. So my doctor kind of recommended it. Uh, but it was the same thing where I had to be basically I, I couldn't do any exercise for six weeks. Yeah. And for the first like two weeks, I was just bent over because like you're literally right, you stand up tall. Well, they cut off your skin and they just they just pull it down. Yes. Yes. Right. And and then you're just kind of bent over for the longest time. So that was my version of that. But also the whole time being really worried about is like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do any exercise for six weeks. I'm going to gain it all back. And then my and my skin just got stretched. It's going to pop out. I'm going to explode. Yes. And you know. And here's so one of the things that I I encountered. I got to be when I, I lost my first like 40 or 50 pounds, my clothing started to get big. I started to notice my skin a little bit more and I started to self-sabotage and I had to go and unpack some of that. So I went to a psychologist who specialized in obesity and I said, I know, I know what my goals are and I want it desperately, like really, really badly. 
And I don't know why I'm sabotaging myself. And so there were a couple of things when I was in my 20s, I had lost some weight on Weight Watchers and had a lot of unwanted attention from men that made me feel very uncomfortable. Mm. So we had to, we had to unpack some of that. And so what I did after that, she didn't tell me to do this, but I'm like, I'm going to go take a self-defense course. That's what I'm going to do. And it was just a one day course. And I took my then 13 year old daughter and the two of us went and we did it. It was this workshop that was done by a local Taekwondo place. And it made me feel empowered. So that way. And also, too, we talked about the fact that, you know, men in their 20 men in their 20s may not be the same as men in their 30s and 40s. And we kind of had to unpack some of that. Then the next thing was I was worried that I wouldn't be able to afford new clothes Four kids, one income. How was I going to? Afford? She's like. Just go to Value Village or go get a pair of second hand. You only need one pair of pants while you're losing, one pair of black pants. And then that's, you don't need a lot, right? And so just make sure that you have one pair of pants and a couple of shirts. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Okay, so we sorted that out. Then the last thing was the skin. I was really worried about excess skin. And so she, we talked about it and I decided on my own, I am going to, in the back of my mind, just say, if I get to my goal weight and the skin is really bothersome, then I give myself permission to go and have it removed. And I will decide when I get to my best weight. That's what I was going to say, my best weight. Remind me of that, Jeremy. I'll come back to that. Um, that, uh, that I can go and have that done. And I even spoke with, uh, uh, with somebody that I know that had gone through the process of having, the, I think they call it a, a penectomy, that, to have the tummy, the tummy done. And she talked to me about that. So in the back of my mind, like my husband was always like, no, you don't need to do it. You look fantastic. Da, 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 da. And, but I still, it just gave me some comfort to know that that was always an option. And then I would decide once I right. got there and then I have to have my gallbladder taken out. And I remember the first thing coming out of recovery, same thing, right? You can't sit up. And it was done laparoscopically. The first thing I said is I'm not getting my skin removed. <laughs> this is too painful. Yeah. Um, I have like mad respect for people that can go through it because it's not, I've, I've heard it's an incredibly difficult recovery, especially initially, like just to not be able to sit up. But the woman I spoke with said that for the first 30 days, it was hard. And then after that, she hasn't regretted it a day in her life. No, yeah. I'm glad I did it. It's, but it's like, you're wearing bags and there's just, it's yes. a whole thing. I, cause I have, and I, cause I still have like giant love handles at the back where because they can only go around so much because you're lying yes. down and passed out so I, yeah same thing with my arms it's all over other places but for that it was it was mostly just uh it was grow it was getting weird well, so you wanted it's weird remember. the it was gonna say it's the worst for me on my upper thighs to be honest yeah. and that's the part that i'm most self-conscious about the rest of it's pretty easy to cover but it, but i've decided you know what i have earned this skin i have earned it and if anybody is gonna go you know what? Ew, your skin. I'll say, well, that's your problem because I worked really hard for this and I don't really care what you think. So there. Yeah. So best weight. So this is what I work towards my best weight. And again, this comes from um, the diet fix. M my best weight is whatever weight I am when I am li living the healthiest life that I can enjoy, not tolerate, but enjoy. So if I do not enjoy going to the gym seven days a week, then that is not my best weight. If I have to cut my food back and my calories back so much that I can't go out with my friends and I can't have a glass of wine and I can't have a piece of cake that we make for my son's birthday, then that is not my best weight. And if my best weight is slightly elevated, but it's maintainable, then that is just fine with me. And so that's what I strive for. I don't go for an ideal weight. And when I worked with clients, I didn't ever go. I said right off the bat, uh, we don't go for best weight. We go or, or we, we go for best weight, not ideal weight. An ideal weight is that BMI range. It's so bullshit. Everybody, everybody agrees it's bullshit. So why are we doctors? Doctors really like it because. Oh, it's don't get me started on doctors. Yeah. Doctors yeah. just like numbers and stats. They love, they love data. They love data, right? They love something very measurable and tangible. And to say, well, I can walk better. I can go up a flight of stairs without getting out of breath. Like, they'll be happy about that, too. But not like if. Ooh, I, I remember one woman, she had gone like that I was working with. She had dropped her A1C by like three points. Her BMI was down um, a few points. They were absolutely thrilled. Well, she had had a million successes before we ever got to the, the, the numbers shifting. You know, that she felt more confident when she went on vacation. She walked everywhere when she visited the Bahamas. All these different things that were so fantastic that happened. These non-scale victories, these non-numerical victories 
they would have been completely dismissed and they probably were more, more meaningful to her and her quality of life than any BMI number. So I go for best weight. That's what I wanted to say before. That's like my favorite piece of advice I've ever heard. It's yeah. like my best weight is, but it's because it speaks to not only your physical health, but your mental health. Absolutely. And, and they're so tied together. <laughs> they really are. And that's what I, so what I do for a living now is I'm a rehab specialist and I work with uh, veterans and I, and I love it because we, I work in this program where we look at the whole person and wellness for the whole person. You can't tease apart physical health and mental health. One affects the other yeah. and vi like vice versa. So, um, you know, that's how that, so I'm really doing health coaching just with a very specific population. And um, once I figured that out, it was like I said, that the walking was never about burning calories for me. And that's the thing I would say about the moving your body piece. Don't think about it as exercise. Don't think about it as, oh, I have something I have to do, but something that you get to do and you can, and because you can, right? Not everybody has that ability to do it. And if you can do it, like I do it, I didn't, I've, I never ever walked to burn calories. I walked to improve my arthritis and I walked and then very quickly realized how much better I felt throughout the day. I felt more energetic. I felt more relaxed. I was better with my kids. I was better with my husband. I was better with everything at handling stress period. And that's why I did it. You know, so it really is about your, about finding your best weight and a life that you love. Love yeah. it. All right. So just as, as we, as we start to mm -hmm. wrap up, what are your go-to tips and tricks for either losing or maintaining maintaining weight loss? So I, I would say my number one tip is don't do anything you're not willing to do for the rest of your life because you could white knuckle through anything for two weeks and you might even see a pretty drastic weight loss and then someone's going to have a birthday party or you're going to get invited to a restaurant. And so if you can't do something for the rest of your life, don't even do it now because you're just going to get frustrated and then you're going to like, you're going to burn out faster. Yo, yo, so yeah. Yeah. And, and what we know from the research is that uh, weight cycling, that lose gain cycle is far more detrimental to our physical and mental health than maintaining an elevated weight. We know that it's pretty, it's, it's, it's in this, it's, it's in the obesity literature. So, you know, that is, that's something. And, and just talk to yourself like you would a good friend be, give yourself some grace. You don't have to be perfect. I just try to do my best at any given moment, any meal. And what I found is that being giving myself that grace goes a lot further at me achieving my goals than being hard on myself. It doesn't work well with kids and it doesn't work well with us either. To reprimand ourselves, to like that feeling of guilt and shame, just let that go. We, we can make mistakes. And you don't, here's the big thing. You don't have to be perfect 100% of the time. And that's been my real aha moment since my surgery is that I, I didn't gain the weight back right away. I, it like part of it too, was my braces. I'm not going to lie this. It sounds silly, but having braces, which I got, mm, I want to say eight months ago, makes it really hard to eat a lot of fresh fruits and veggies. I can't eat raw carrots the way that I used to. Everything has to be softer or cooked kale and everything else gets stuck in here. And it's, it's that I think has almost contributed to my weight gain more than my surgery did. Um, but what I figured out is if I were to walk during the nice months and just ride my stationary bike in the winter months, I bet you I would be able to maintain my weight without a whole lot of effort. So that's what I'm going to try this year is once the melt comes, I'm going to start walking again, just half hour, 35 minutes or so. And on the days when it's not so nice, just do something, whether it's dancing in my kitchen, stretching, uh, playing with my kids, even cleaning and all of that stuff. It's, it all counts as movement. Think about move, you know, thinking about yep. movement instead of exercise. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Last one. Yep. Uh, three for, for eating whole food plant place, three essential kitchen tools. You only get three, like only Desert Island. Okay. Okay. Really good Japanese knife. Love my Japanese knives. My husband gave it to me one year for Valentine's Day. Told my mom, she's like, that's pretty weird Valentine's Day gift. But it was, it's one of the best gifts I've ever got. Really good Japanese knife. We do so much chopping, you know. So I would say that. 
I would say uh, a rice cooker. I love my rice cooker so much because I make quinoa, I make rice, um, and I just set it and forget it and walk away. You're going to make me just pick one more? I, I will say if you want to adjust it, because like we don't have a rice cooker, but we have an Instant Pot, which is basically the same thing for us. Yes. Yeah. So, well, we could say Instant Pot, Instant slash Pot, rice slash cooker. rice cooker. I'll give you that. You can have that. Okay. Because okay. um, I did have an Instant Pot, but I was only making like two recipes in it. So I'm, I gave it to my neighbor. Oh, we, um, use ours, we use ours daily. We use really, I, I know of some people on a whole food plant-based diet that have multiple. We they have... have a couple on their counter for oatmeal it makes the best oatmeal i've ever had really? it's perfect every time oh jeremy now i want my instant pot back. i'm gonna go knock on my neighbor's door excuse Morning me if you're watching no i'm just kidding you can keep it um and that we have a ninja which is like a vitamix also love that so that's what we make our plant-based cheese in we make our curry like we make um a bit of a jalapeno ginger paste and garlic paste in there for our dishes we use that quite a bit i would probably be pretty sad if if we oh but then there's the crepe maker <laughs> no because i could use a frying pan i'm good i'm good i'm gonna yeah. stick with my vitamix ninja i really we really love it i make i use it to make dressings i use it to make crepe batter yeah. um they're very versatile. I think for sure, like yeah. for if you're eating whole food plant based, you need something that processes food, whether it's a blender or an actual food processor, because it, yes. it's just you know we textures, creams, nuts yes. and seeds, and things just need to be mixed together in different yep. ways. And you can't do it with a whisk, right? Like that's what I was going to say. Maybe no. my standard mixer, because we do do a lot of baking. But you know, I could whisk that. You can use your hand. Yeah, there's. I, I think of that too. I'm like, there are tools that my my physical body yes. I can't do. That's right. No matter how much of a... I know, cannot like, chop the way a, a, a no. Vitamix or a Ninja can. No, exactly. So I think that those would be my top three because you're forcing me to pick three, but I could have a top 10. Well, we could I go could. on and on and on. That's right. Trust me. Um, yes. So thank you. You've been so generous with your time. This has been so great. So I'll, I'll uh, you can email it to me and I'll add it to the description below as well. But just for the people that are still watching, um, where can they find you online? if they want to follow you and your and continue on along your journey. Yeah, so they can find me. So my I'm Andrea Sarita. Uh, Andrea Sarita Coach is my Facebook and that's my personal Facebook and uh, it's open to everybody. I haven't been posting as much as I was before, but uh, we'll get back to doing that. I will be getting back to doing that shortly. We've had a couple of big transitions in our home. And then uh, Journey Health Studio, I've got some stuff there. And then you know what I could do if you like, Jeremy, is I will set up, just give me a couple of hours, but I can set up a code for uh, anybody that's watching to get my uh, cookbook for free. They can download it. Um, and I've got my, the, I think I have the cheese recipe in there. This I do, the sunflower cheese recipe, but I've got all of our favorite recipes that my husband and I have done. Are, is in there and so if you're the people that are watching would like it then they can download a free copy great so for those that are watching this far after the fact it's probably already down though but for those that are watching right now check back later tonight and we'll throw it up in there yeah well awesome. this has been so lovely thank you so much for your time and for those who are watching who haven't yet please do um leave a comment below the like do a subscribe, all those things for for more interviews like this and other things that we do on the channel but andrea thank you for your time I hope, I hope you had the loveliest of, of weekends. Thank you. And, uh, and I hope you get to your best weight very soon. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm feeling confident that I will. I, it just, the, you know what? The biggest lesson here for me has been patience and trust, you know, and trusting that the whole food plant-based diet is the healthiest diet for me and uh, just being patient. That's what it takes. Patience, consistency equals success at least that that's the case for me so that's an awesome note to go down thanks andrea thanks jeremy bye everyone <laughs>